Hello, everyone. I'm happy to share the Word of Almighty God with you again. Uh, hello to all my friends in the Philippines, and hello to my friends in the United States, and hello to everyone around the world that would take the time to listen. And I'm, this is the Word of God. I'm very honored to be able to share it with you. I want to uh, talk today about Lucifer, and we're going to start in the book of Isaiah, chapter 14. I want to say this, some people think if you talk about Lucifer, you're giving glory to him. I'm not giving any glory to him. I, I don't like him. I hate him. He's my adversary. He's your adversary. The Bible says this, and so you should know about your adversary, and that's why uh, in the Holy Bible, it speaks quite a bit about Lucifer, about Satan. And so a person should be aware of their enemy and know a lot about them. How are you going to do battle with your enemy if you don't know about them? So again, I'm not giving glory to Satan, and uh, but we're going to talk about him today. Isaiah chapter 14, and we'll start in verse 12. It says, How are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How are you cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? Notice that, nations. This is how powerful this being is. He, he comes against whole nations. That's a powerful being. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. I think some of the most striking words in that whole passage, and we're going to read a little more in that same passage, is the word I. Lucifer keeps saying, I, 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 I. See, he's not a humble person. He's very proud, okay? And it says, uh, yet you shall be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see you shall narrowly look upon you and consider you, saying, is this the man that made the earth to tremble and did shape kingdoms that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof that opened not the house of his prisoners? There's a lot said there. Uh, notice the question. <laughs> are, are you the one that uh, made the earth to tremble and shook kingdoms and made the world as a wilderness? Uh Lucifer is a very powerful being. Um, I'm going to read another chap, uh, passage in Ezekiel here right away. But there, there's another passage in uh, Jude chapter 1, verse 9. It says, Yet Michael, the archangel, as we, under, as we understand, there are three archangels. Lucifer, Michael, and Gabriel. Uh, that's the only ones that we know for sure, I think. Three archangels, which makes sense. Satan draw, drew one-third of the angels when he was cast out of heaven. Apparently, Lucifer was in charge as an archangel of one-third of the angels. And I assume Michael was in charge of a third and Gabriel in charge of a third. Notice I said, I assume. Uh, but it says, yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, dared not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke you. Now, Michael the archangel was the one that the Almighty commanded to throw Lucifer out of heaven, so Michael is a very powerful being. He's, he very much understands operating within the guidelines of Almighty God, 
And he was able to throw Lucifer out of heaven, even though I believe Lucifer was a more powerful being than him. But if the Almighty commissions you to do something, he empowers you to do it. And Michael was empowered by the Almighty himself to throw Lucifer out of heaven, and he was thrown out. But notice this passage. Even, Luke, uh, even Michael, the archangel, it says he dared not bring a railing accusation against Lucifer. So Michael, the archangel, mighty in power, <laughs> a mighty incredible being, he was humble and knew his place, and he, he kept himself safely within the protection of Almighty God, talking to Lucifer. And he spoke to him and told him a thing or two. But he's very careful. He said, the Lord rebuke you. And we are human beings. We're much less powerful than Michael, the archangel. So it would be wise for us to not bring a railing accusation against Satan ourselves, right? We should stay within the boundaries and the protection of the Almighty. Our, our words and stuff about Lucifer, uh, Satan, should be things like, well, the Lord, the Almighty says this about Satan. And, and if you have to rebuke him, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. Uh, and we use the name of Jesus to cast out devils, right? Stand well within the, the protection of Almighty God, like Michael the Archangel, and not bringing a railing accusation. But uh, also notice it says, cause the earth to tremble. <laughs> I, I think that the earth, the earth, the world and the earth are not the same. The world is basically the world system and the people in the earth. And the Bible speaks of, of Satan as the prince of this world. Satan doesn't own the earth, but the world, he's the prince of the world. They're not the same, the same idea, okay? And Satan apparently shook the earth itself. The, the sphere, the ball that we call the earth, caused it to tremble. <laughs> Think about that. I, there's, I don't even know how I would start to make the earth to tremble, and yet Lucifer did. And it says uh, there in verse 17 uh, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof. Wow. Say, so careful, Mickey, you're bringing glory to Satan. Hmm. If I'm bringing glory to Satan, then the Holy Bible is bringing glory to Satan. No, it's just stating facts. Lucifer is, as we say, a worthy adversary, not someone to be taken lightly. Uh, you need to know how to go. Uh, one thought comes to my mind that the, the seven sons of Siva in the book of Acts, they uh, carelessly without the name of Jesus, and apparently without even knowing Jesus, uh, said, we adjure you by uh, the Jesus that Paul preaches, and adjure you, command you. And the Bible says that the seven, uh, the, the demons in this person jumped, leaped out on these men and chased them and beat them up and left them naked and beaten. So <laughs> we need to be careful that we stay within the, the uh, protection of Almighty God when we deal with these, these beings that are against us. Okay, and uh, along with this passage, like I said, I wanted to read in Ezekiel chapter 28, um, and we'll talk a little bit more about some of these things. It's a very big subject. Possibly we'll speak about it another week, but anyway, in Ezekiel chapter 28, it says, uh, starting in verse 11, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. 
You have been in Eden, the garden of God, the garden of Eden. We know that in the book of Genesis. Lucifer, Satan was there in the garden of Eden, right? Notice it says, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. These are the words of the Holy Spirit speaking about Lucifer. The Almighty knows about Lucifer. He's the one that created him. And with foreknowledge and, and everything, apparently knew what would happen eventually, but apparently even the angels have uh, freedom of choice, and Lucifer chose to rebel. But here it's talking about Lucifer when he was created. It says, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. <laughs> Again, I, it's pretty amazing. Okay? Now, it says, you have been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardius, topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. <laughs> Satan is decorated some, uh, Lucifer was decorated somehow with all these gems. That's fascinating to me. The Almighty did that. Notice this. The workmanship of your tibrays, or timbrels, and of your pipes was prepared in you in the day you were created. It's believed that Lucifer was the choir director in heaven. You know there's great worship and praise that goes on in heaven, and we'll take part in that as Christians when, uh, when we go to heaven. And apparently, again, Lucifer was in charge of it, probably. He had music, uh, percussion, kind of like uh, tambourines and uh, pipes, maybe some sort of horns or whatever, that were built into his very body. Unusual. Uh, don't know of any other creature like that. But Lucifer was. And, and if you'll notice, in worldly music, there's some very powerful uh, music that takes place in worldly music, let alone in Christian music. Um, and Lucifer is the prince uh, of this world. And so it's really not a surprise that the worldly music would have such a power to it because Lucifer is behind it. Um, and he used to lead worship or apparently led worship, but anyway, he had musical instruments in his body, and he's involved in worship in heaven. Okay, and, and so it goes on and says, You are the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set you so. A cherub is, uh, we, we talk about cherubim. Lucifer is a cherub, a cherub the anointed cherub. In fact, I think it's the only place it says something about a cherub being anointed and refers to him as the anointed cherub. Um, that's not a small matter at all. It's the anointed cherub that covereth. What did he cover? There's a lot we don't know. He said, and the Almighty says, and I have set you so. I made you that way. You were upon the holy mountain of God. He used to be in heaven, on the holy mountain. You have walked up and down in, in the midst of the stones of fire. What does that mean? I have puzzled over that many times. And um, the Bible talks about uh, fire and coals of fire and used for cleansing. Apparently, Lucifer was a part of this. He used to walk up and down in the coals of fire. He had a very, very prominent place in heaven. Probably the most fabulous creature that the Almighty created. Probably. Lucifer. 
Notice verse 15. You were perfect in your ways from the day that you were created till iniquity was found in you. Perfect. He was created perfectly. A beautiful, uh, melodious, <laughs> powerful, wonderful creature of God. But sin entered into him. Um, and I was going to make a comment. It's on down verse 17. I'll wait. Verse 16. By the multitude of your merchandise, you have filled the midst of you with violence, and you have sinned. Therefore, I will cast you as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. He was no longer useful to Almighty God when he rebelled. You remember what we just read in Isaiah? He said, I will ascend into heaven. I will set my throne up. I'll take God's place. <laughs> but that's where his, his power and his strength and might came to a screeching halt as far as heaven was concerned because the Almighty says, no, you're not doing that in my heaven. You're not doing that in any way. I'm God, you're not God, and I'll throw you out, and that's it for you. And that, really, you don't have to be afraid of Satan, Christian. You don't have to be afraid of him. However, he is still a mighty, powerful being, and you should not take him for granted. You should not play around with him. You should not toy around with sin because it'll get on you. <laughs> and the Bible talks about people um, being kind of blinded and uh, becoming obscure, I think, in their thinking even, by reason of sin. Don't toy around with sin. Lucifer will kick you around big time and do great damage to you if you toy around with him. He's no one to be toyed around with. But if you trust in Almighty God and follow Him, there's nothing to fear either. Verse 17, your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. He became proud. He was such a beautiful creature. Maybe some of the others bo uh, uh, complimented him so much, I don't know. But somehow this went to his head, and he let it go to his head. No one has to become proud. No one has to become rebellious. That's a choice. And, and Lucifer chose not to stay in the proper boundaries. Like Michael, the archangel, we already talked about that. He, he knew his boundaries, and he knew how to stay within what the Almighty had for him. But Lucifer didn't do that. The Bible says, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. And this is what happened to Lucifer. His pride went before his destruction. And the Almighty is not less powerful. He just threw him out of heaven. He, he didn't even do it himself. He told Michael to go do it. And Michael did it. Michael the archangel. I, I like that. He's not someone to be terrified of if you're walking with Almighty God. He says, your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You have corrupted your wisdom by reason of your brightness. I will cast you to the ground. I will lay you before kings that they may behold you. You have defiled your sanctuaries by the multitude of your iniquities, by the iniquity of your traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of you, and it shall devour you. I think maybe that's going on right now. There's a fire burning in, inside of Satan. It's devouring him. And it's too late to do anything about it. He's sinned and crossed the line. And there's no getting back for him. It says, And I will bring you to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold you. All they that know you among the people shall be astonished at you. You shall be a terror, and never shall you be any more. I'm not sure if that means he'd cease to exist, but he... He's done. <laughs> it's just a matter of time. But in the meantime, right now, 
He's causing the earth to tremble and, and shaking whole kingdoms. And in case you didn't know, <laughs> the mighty United States, it used to be a godly nation feared around the world, not because of its weapons, I don't think, because of how great Almighty God had made America. This being, Lucifer, is causing, he's shaking America. And the people of America are the cause of it being able to happen because Satan can't just come in and wreck a country. He has deception. We talked about this two or three, four weeks ago. All he has, basically, is to try to convince people to let him have power in their life. And they're listening to him. Therefore, America is being shaken by him. And every other country that's not following Almighty God. And you just know that. The coronavirus, that's nothing. If we're serving Almighty God, he can, he can click that out of here in no time. No big deal. No sweat. But for a people that have turned their back on Almighty God, it's pretty hard to get rid of, isn't it? It's the way it works. So the, for the people out there that are rebellion against Almighty God, you just go right ahead and sin and watch it all just cave right in on all of us that are sinners. But for those who fear Almighty God and serve Him, you know, there's a place prepared for in heaven for eternity. So I'm going to try to wrap this up because I don't want to go too long. We may talk about this subject some more, maybe next week. I'm not sure yet. But the Bible says, in 1 Peter 5, 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. He can't just devour anyone. He's seeking someone to devour. And if he can convince you of a lie, convince you that God doesn't love you, etc., etc., then he'll be able to devour you. And he's going around like a roaring lion, looking for those kind of people. So... We're to be sober and vigilant, to, to be on guard and, and watching for our adversary. And it comes in all kinds of forms, all kinds of forms. And I don't have time to get into that subject today. Second Corinthians 4, 4 calls him the God of this world. John 12, 31 calls him the prince of this world. Ephesians 2, 2 calls him the prince of the power of the air. That's kind of an interesting one. John 8, 44 says he's a liar and the father of lies. And in Revelation 20, verse 2, it refers to him as the devil, that old serpent, the dragon, and Satan. All of those names, and there, there are other names for him. I, I believe there's probably quite a few more names that I haven't mentioned that's in the Bible. But um, he's all of these things, and he's your enemy, and he hates your guts. Whether you're a Christian or whether you're a sinner, he hates you, and he hates your soul, and he does not want you to live eternally with Almighty God. Lucifer used to be in heaven. He was thrown out, and, and there's a fire con burning, consuming him. It's too late for him, but it's not too late for you. But he wants to deceive you and, and get you to join him instead of Almighty God. That's what he's all about. He doesn't care about all your stuff. He wants your soul. He wants your soul, I'm telling you, and you better take care of that through Christ, our Savior. I said earlier, it's not wise to take him lightly. So I'm not really afraid of Lucifer, of Satan. However, I have respect for uh, who he is. I know that verse that I read about how Michael talked to him, and I've learned by the Bible, uh, by the Word of God, that I should be smart about how I talk about him, how I handle him. Some people go around talking about how they're going to stomp him under their feet and everything. And I think some of that's biblical. 
but some of the attitude and the way it's said seems like they're railing on him like Michael the archangel wouldn't dare do. So I just encourage you, be strong in the Almighty. Uh, you can cast out devils in the name of Jesus if, if there needs to be that. But always stay, again, within the boundaries of Almighty God, under his protection and his safety. Don't, don't run around saying wild things. And that's not a wise thing to do. So it's just a little bit more information about the kingdom of God. As uh, Christians, we need to be aware of our enemy and know how to do battle. You, know, you remember the passage talks about taking the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day. We have weapons of warfare and there's ways to use them, ways not to use them. We should be aware of our enemy and know how to use the weapons of God and to walk in the spirit and to honor the Almighty in all that we do. So um, I'm encouraging you to do that and to know more about your enemy, okay? And I hope you have a good week. And I do want to say this while I go. Um, I don't really like Facebook. Um, I don't trust Facebook. They're, not, they're hostile to people like me. And so I would like to find a way in time of how to, um, to do this that I'm doing here without using Facebook. I don't know how long that'll take me. Um, but if you would like to leave a comment, please do. And if you would like to leave your email address where I could maybe make this available to you through email, that would maybe start making a way where I could do that. And so again, have a good week. God bless you.